Right, the scissors are out, the cardboard's out, the tape is out, and the sharpies are out. It's time for some cardboard-aided engineering, and I think I've got a very cool solution to sorting out my motor mounts. So on the left side, or the right side if you're sitting in the driver's seat, the motor mount has to come up here and then go across and down in a little arch to avoid the uh, pipework for the power steering um, and also avoid the um, steering whatever <laughs> linkage let's call it that of course over here we don't have that problem there's nothing to avoid so rather than going up and then across like i thought actually since we're using six mil plate which is very stiff we can actually just weld um, an arm on there we can brace it if we need to but i actually don't think it will be necessary um, get a really good weld on there yes i know i don't have great track record on that front but a nice simple shape that we can cut out with the plasma cutter um, and clean up with the grinder. Um, so that's a rough template. It's probably good enough for a starting point. Um, I'll draw it out properly with a, put a proper radius on there and get these uh, dimensions a bit more even. Um, cut that out of a piece of six mil plate. Uh, whip all this off and, uh, well, no, we won't whip it off. We'll have to tack it on while it's there. Fortunately, the uh, motor mounts down here. I know I've got four motor mounts now which is overkill but two of them also double up as mounts for the back of the battery box um, so I'm not too worried about that. So yeah I'm quite pleased with that. The other advantage and I haven't tested this yet is that it might allow me to leave the um, heater mount exactly as it is. Might need to modify this design slightly um, but yeah we shall see. I'll stick it in and uh, and see if it all um, avoids each other. There we go, transferred the cardboard template into Fusion, forgive my very messy desk, um, and printed it out so I can stick that to a piece of steel now uh, and cut it out. I might do it with the grinder rather than the um, plasma torch um, just for neatness sake. Um, I'm going to leave it a little bit long this end um, get it fitted up uh, for two reasons. One is, um, I don't know that I've got this angle precisely right in the transfer between the template and here. It was a little bit rough. So it'll allow me to sort of trim and tweak and get the angle exactly right. But also, I might need to put a bend in here. I don't know that the plane of the um, motor mount is the same as the um, angle that it'll be coming off the... Um, off the, the rest of the mount. I don't know if I'll be able to make the two line up. In an ideal world, it'll just be flat. But if I do need to put an extra kink in here, I need a little bit of extra material at this end to make it all line up. Working in the gazebo, because the weather is miserable as ever. Got my pattern glued down to my sheet of metal. This is the same six mil stuff I used for the rest of the motor mount. And plan is to just run a grinder up here. So I'm gonna leave this gap here so I've got some extra material to work with. I'm just going to run it up here uh, and then I'll use the uh, uh, I'll, I'll roughly trim this and then I'll use the uh, the bench uh, grinder uh, the bench wheel to uh, try and get a nice smooth end to that. Yeah talking nonsense but you know what I'm saying. There we go much, uh, well, actually not much bit of cutting, drilling and uh, grinding and we've got a roughed out piece. Part of me thinks I always intended to do this, maybe I just ran out of time. I don't know, I don't have a good memory. I have to go back and watch my own videos. Um, so that's pretty hot. As you can see, it's, I can't drop it all the way down because it's fouling the, uh, the bolt through. So I'm just gonna have to trim that a little bit until it's a good fit. There we go. Even though I cut it very carefully, slice by slice, I almost cut it slightly short in the end. But nothing that can't be filled with a bit of weld. And I can just trim off the axis there and round it out to a nice shape. So I'll clean up this top side, tack it together, um, and put a jack under here, and pull the whole thing off. And I'm going to clean it all back and give it all a good coat of paint. Obviously, at the same time, while I've got the welder out, I'll weld this side up. Um, and those pieces you saw me prepare in the last episode. Um, so then it can all be just painted as one. 
and we've got a nice solid motor mount again. But I'm not doing that today because it's pouring with rain. It's quite early for a Sunday. I probably shouldn't be making lots of noise like dropping a jack and smashing a hole in the floor of my shed. <laughs> but it's time for a little Meg action. I've got what Greg would call my sparkulator out. Uh, this is the Sparkulator 9000 model. <laughs> Actually a Clark MiG 151EN that came out of a skip I found outside of a garage a couple, few years ago. Um, it's had a couple of upgrades. Um, it didn't come with a Euro torch fitting. Um, it didn't come with a gas solenoid. Um, so it's marginally better than it was, but it's still frankly a bit shit. Um, I've just had to bin a load of welding wire because it was rusty. This stuff is still not perfect, but it's getting better as I go down through the layers. I'll do a few beads on that piece over there. I've not cleaned that piece up. I don't, it's one thing getting a welder out at this time in the morning. It's quite another thing getting an angle grinder out. Um, so I'll just do some very messy runs on there just to get a sense of it. And then I've got everything lined up in here, ready to go. It's all bolted down. None of the clamps I've got are really going to work for holding it in place. So it's going to be a uh, uh, hold and MIG kind of uh, affair. Just sort of tacking it in place, adding some more beads and trying not to get too much heat into it that it melts the rubbers. Um, so probably get a wet cloth on there as well. Not on the welds, but just around them to keep it cool. Sadly, I don't have enough hands to film all this. And I can't be bothered to go and get my uh, tripod out. I've spent enough time getting all this equipment out. I'm banging back in and out through the door, so just going to crack on. If you're thinking these look like more than tacks, <laughs> you'd be right. Um, I figured actually, as long as I can keep the rubber bits from melting I should put down as much of a bead as possible so that when I pull it off and finish weld it from the reverse um, it doesn't all um, warp out of shape. So not my best welding although it is the first time I've welded in probably I don't know a couple of years so there's my first excuse. Second excuse is that the wire feed as ever on this welder is pretty uneven so trying to get a consistent bead is very hard but nonetheless you can see some good penetration there, if that's your sort of thing. Um, well, that's when I cranked it right up to maximum amps. Over here, less good penetration probably. We'll see when we get around the back. But again, a bit more, bit better penetration over there, it looks like. So we'll see when we put it all off and finish weld it. Finish it up with the grinder. Uh, it will all look lovely. Might even tidy up these welds a little bit with my uh, finger sander, so it all looks pretty. That, as the saying goes, is not going anywhere. On to the next bit. It is installed and all torqued down. I've finished up underneath the uh, talking up all the gearbox mounting bolts, gubo, everything else. Oh, I just still need to talk up the uh, locking collar on the prop shaft. Let's just just remember that. I need to go and do that, and I need to talk these nuts up here as well, nuts and bolts up here as well. But <laughs> that is just such a dramatic improvement. That is, as they say, going nowhere. Uh, power delivery is going to be fun. I'll have a lot more confidence boosting it now. And uh, yeah, very, very pleased with that. So I shall finish up those bits of, uh, those last bits of talking, and then we shall see if the heater fits in the existing bracket or whether, and I suspect it does not, or whether we need to build a new one. As suspected, <laughs> it's not even close to fitting. Um, I'm sort of baffled it fit before, to be honest. So, um, plan is 
take off this mount, cut it up and rotate the heater through 90 degrees, either that way or facing the other way, maybe the other way, don't know. One way or another, work it out so that this is, it's straight up. Uh, and yeah, maybe the other way up actually. It doesn't really matter an awful lot. Um, but there's plenty of slack in this wire, which I haven't shortened. Um, so yeah, so I'll work that out. But I shall do that in the next episode, I think. There we go then. Um, good progress. All the fundamental mechanicals done now on this upgrade. Um, there's a couple of mounts to make. Going to have to remount the charger. And as you've just seen, remount the uh, heater. But uh, yeah, enjoying fabricating again. It's been a long time. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. Oh yeah, like and subscribe and all that.